For those of you, <coughs> excuse me, who have been able to follow the readings of the last few days uh, during the weekday masses, <coughs> there is a particular theme going on. The theme of which the Holy Father has dedicated this entire year, <coughs> this theme of mercy. We've seen the mercy shown a couple of days ago um, in the parable of the vineyard with uh, the owner of the vineyard sent not just uh, one uh, of his servants who was ba uh, beat or killed, he sent some more who, was beat, who were beat and killed, and then he finally sent his son. He gave them three chances these, uh, to the people who were leasing the vineyard to do what is right. And then we saw the, par the parable of the prodigal son, of course, with the fact that the prodigal son treated his father with less than perfect filial respect, and yet when he was on his bare bones, his father didn't rub his face in it, he accepted him back, and more than just accepted him back, he embraced him, he loved him, he gave him a great feast to show that he was truly loved despite the fact uh, of, of all that he had done wrong. And so we see also in the Gospel today, this fig tree is given another chance. But it's already been given three years to prove itself. It's already uh, three seasons to, to produce figs. It hasn't produced figs. Its time is up, and yet there's one more chance. One of the brothers this morning at breakfast brought up an interesting point about this particular um, gospel today. He says, because there's another um, episode in the gospels where Jesus doesn't even give the fig tree a, a chance. It's a time when figs aren't supposed to be growing and he curses it and it withers up and dies. So what's the difference between that, that episode and this one? In this one, there's someone to intercede for the fig tree. There's someone who says, wait, wait, wait. Lord, give it another chance. And for us, it's a moment to reflect because the, the salvation of souls, the mercy of God sometimes depends on us. Us stepping forward to defend the weak, the poor, the unfruitful. Sometimes in person we need to do this, but always we need to do this in prayer to mediate for one another, to not forget one another, to, especially those who may not have received the graces that we have received. If we have received a grace to pray, a grace to believe, to be part of the faith, then we must therefore pray for those who haven't produced fruit because maybe they haven't known, maybe they haven't been fertilized, manured, so to speak, as we have been, given the goodness that we might grow so sometimes through our prayers, we need to dig around and uh, dig around those trees, uh, cultivate the ground, and allow it to be fertilized so these souls too might grow and bear fruit, and the garden of the Lord may be even more, more fruitful and more beautiful. <clears throat> this is another aspect, therefore, of Lent. It's not just about us. It's not just about what we give up and what we give to our Lord. It's about helping others to have something to offer God. We are not in this alone. We have to be very careful that we don't think of that, uh, of that being the case. Hence, we have community exercises all the time. The liturgy, for example, whether it be the mass, whether it be the liturgy of the hours that uh, religious and priests pray, whether it be the other sacraments outside of the mass, is always a community event. <clears throat> There's no such thing, per se, as a private Mass. There might be a priest who says Mass in private, but it's always a community event, even if there's no one else there. All of heaven is there, and everyone is brought to that altar during the Mass. And so we are in it together, and we live in community, and the family is all a reflection of Jesus Christ and of the Holy Trinity, which is the first community of which the rest of us are based on. And so we need to ask ourselves, are we generous in our prayers and in our sacrifices for one another? For those whom we know, for those whom we love, for those whom we have trouble loving, and for those whom we don't know. Do we even consider praying for them? I mean, we hear <clears throat> even little things like when we hear the news, you know, 17 people have died, these people are in this trouble, there's this war going on. And it's a tragedy, but do we say a prayer there and then? That's an opportunity. Pray for those people. 
that they may be strong enough and that out of this trial is, uh, they may bear fruit. It's very important because God in his mercy sometimes wish, uh, wills it that we be dispensers of that mercy. And we don't know his full plan, but maybe if we don't pray for those souls, they will be less. Let us hope that they won't be lost because of us, but they certainly would be less fruit grown in the vineyard of Christ. We, of course, are very blessed because we have a mediatrix already and always interceding for us. She's quite the gardener, the Blessed Virgin Mary, constantly digging up around the trunks of our souls and constantly mediating the graces that we need, we desperately need sometimes, to be the Christians that God has asked us to be. Sometimes our soul is like the land around here, hard and rocky, um, aquaphobic, doesn't like to receive those graces, it's actually grace-phobic, doesn't want to, doesn't want to change, and it might not necessarily malice, but it might just be it might just be tiredness, it might be laziness, it might be distractions in our lives that don't allow the graces to penetrate. But Our Lady continues nevertheless. She's like that gardener that will not give up. You know, you may have seen those gardeners who have a real green thumb. Who say green thumb or green finger? Whichever it is. Who can make a desert bloom. That's the Blessed Virgin Mary in our souls. She wants us to cooperate in her mission, therefore, <clears throat> of bearing fruit for her son. She who bore her son. She who bore the fruit um, uh, um, that, that gives flavor to life, certainly, and gives us the sustenance to continue. Let us, therefore, invite her into our lives, especially during Lent, to say, listen, I'm trying to cultivate my soul. But if you come and do it, you're the expert, it'll be a lot quicker and even less painful than if I try to do it to myself. And in doing so, the more fruit that we are able to produce with God's help and through the intercession of Our Lady, the more likely it is that we will be successful in helping others also. For any of you who have learned anything, which is all of us, certainly um, whether it be a trade or whatever else, you know you cannot teach if you do not know. You cannot give if you do not have. So let us first strive during Lent, especially to receive these graces and these helps from God and the Blessed Virgin. But let us not be stingy. Let us be very generous in giving them out to others. God will not leave us wanting. He definitely will not leave us wanting. And the more we give, the more likely it is that we will never be lost. I can assure you from several years, and all the fries here have been in religious life longer than me, several years living on divine providence and trying to live a life of giving all the time, God never leaves us short. He never leaves us, um, he never abandons us. His providence always comes through, even though sometimes it is at the, 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 last, the last minute and the last second, Nevertheless, he never leaves us wanting. <clears throat> Let us therefore step forward in confidence, in faith, in trust. Let us call on our mother that she may assist us, she may hide us, she may cultivate us, that we may walk forward with no fear, loving God, allowing him to work in our souls and assisting him, so to speak, cooperating in his mission and in the mission of his mother for bringing as many souls as possible into this garden of Christ to make them as fruitful as possible for his glory and for their salvation.